Okay, uh, sorry my my video stopped. I don't got time to splice the video. Um, so if you're interested in buying a ID4 or want to know about the long-term use, you should check out part one. And this is part two. I'm sorry that I'm so busy. I don't got time to splice them together. So let me just give you the, the lowdown about, about the chair. Um, as I was saying before, um, the seats are not comfortable enough for me to sit um, without the cushion there. The back and the other parts are very comfortable. If I have a complaint, I wish that they were ventilated seats. I do have a bamboo seat cover I might throw on here. Um, I didn't know it had lumbar massage until I bought the car and I love the seat massage. Um, I use it in moderation just to keep it fresh. Um, it's a pretty good, pretty good massage. Now, let me tell you about in the layout here, the aesthetics and stuff, is great i think it's a very very nice uh layout you could hear the seat giving me a massage right now and that that noise you could hear is that fan cooler right there um one thing i did notice it took me a little while to get used to the to the lock to the windows uh, here do i wish they were dedicated sure you kind of get used to it it's not a big thing um but at the beginning it was a little bit stressful um, also letting people out the back, I would inadvertently hit the child look, child lock a lot. And, and sometimes even though that's off, it's not off in the back. So you have to run it, cycle through it a couple times to actually get it to unlock the rear sometimes. Um, speaking of these doors, these doors are not one of my complaints. If there's a complaint, these are electric. So the latch there is not on what you think of as the cable. I don't know. Maybe there is a cable in here. But in the back, it seems to me that's just an electric switch. And a lot of people actually have a hard time getting out of the back. They'll pull it too fast or they'll pull it a little bit and they'll try to open it. And I have to tell them, just pull the handle first and then push. Because it takes a second. Like, you see that? It's not opening right now. There's lag there. So... You see how it's not open? So it's a little bit of lag because it's not a cable and that throws off some people. Um, right here, the console, it's very easy to push the, the max defrost when you're trying to get the front, uh, the front lights for the, the built-in storm fog lights. Um, and if you use the max defrost, it cuts your battery consumption greatly. Um, so I do use it sometimes, but not that often. And the rear turns off too soon, I think. Um, that's as far as that goes. Um, these lights are great for the storm lights. I'll show you the outside. I wish they were yellow for inclement weather, but overall the lights on this car are great. Now, some things that are take some getting used to. Um, when you look here in the a pillar section it's hard to see over the corner of your front wheels i've i have to say from all the vehicles i've had this is one of the most difficult cars to see clearly out of the front and it doesn't matter if you got the seat all the way up or all the way down but this kind of gives you a blind spot right here in the arch right there um in all the other volkswagens i have it's much easier to see the road it's not a bad, terrible thing. It's slightly more difficult. You gotta be cautious about it. On a positive note is the, the mirrors are very big and they're excellent mirrors. Um, the blind spot monitor, I wish that they had connected the blind spot monitor into the turn signal um, or when you turn and if you're going to turn and there's a car over there, I wish it would give you a warning sound. It seemed like they could do that with a software um, to not allow you to get over if there's somebody in your blind spot. And there's a blind spot over there. It works great. You can see I have a ceramic tint up on the front here. And all the windows are also ceramic tinted all around the vehicle. Um, you cannot take out this drink console after you put this overlay. Be warned. Um, I use this quite a bit. Um, works quite well i go through a lot of water um the center cubby hole it's not as big as it should be um i wish it was bigger i wish you could take it out kind of um but it's not so bad uh 
what are some negativities about the cockpit and stuff? I do like the the arm on the chair. I wish there was one on the left side too, and there's not, because unless unless you actually unless you actually put your seat down, um, unless you put your seat down like evenly, you can't put your left arm and your right arm at the same level like a captain's chair. So that's kind of kind of an autistic thing that makes me a little bit upset sometimes. Um, but what there's there's so much we have to talk about here um the seat positioning is pretty good uh, when you put the seat down i wish that you could have more leverage to put the still the steering column down more sometimes i like to sit down uh sometimes i like to sit really raised up sometimes down but when i sit far down i don't feel like the telescoping steering wheel uh, it's not a huge deal um, but i wish it could go down just a little bit um, the voice recognition on here is okay. We could, uh, talk about entertainment system. I know a lot of people talk really bad about this car for the entertainment. I don't have a lot of issues with it. Here's the issues I do have though. When you first start up the car, uh, the touch capacitive buttons are not always working here. Now these are touch capacitive versus here. These actually have a, you push it in there and it's got a, it gives, it gives way a little bit when you push on every review it they act like oh they act like they don't give way no there there's a li little bit of movement inside this button here whereas these do not give any movement at all and i can't always get into my climate control from there so if it's really cold out or it's not working i always hit this one here the seat warmer icon will take you into the climate control interface now what makes me upset is if you just hit the climate control interface at the beginning here Let me show you here. A lot of times it will go into this section and it will not have your steering wheel heater. I always use my steering wheel heater because I'm an old man and weak or whatever. I love it. Um, but you can't get your steering wheel he heater unless you go into the classic climate section. Okay. Now, talking about climate control in this car, um, I have found... I have found that if you really want to feel the effect of the warmth, I've got to set mine to at least 74 degrees. That does take a little bit of a hit on the battery, uh, but I find that 68 and 69 and 70 and 72, I almost don't feel anything. I really don't feel the heat till it gets up to 74. Um, in general, talking about installation, I think this car is breezy in inclement weather. I could feel, it seems like I feel like wind blowing through a little bit. I feel that it doesn't hold the heat like I wish it would. And I'm going to talk about the insulation, some issues that I think could be improved. I wish this car had a little bit better insulation for the climate control. I think that would help the battery too. It seems like uh, it doesn't have that good insulation compared to other cars that I've had. Uh, as far as the interface goes here, um, we're not, well, first let's talk about the climate control. Um, when you go in the smart climate section, I never use, the only thing I use on here is the fresh air button. And the fresh air will not work if your temperature is set too far below the outside climate, okay? Um, I use that a lot. It'll run, it'll turn off. I never use anything else on this one. I For classic climate, um, I do use the defrost during the, when it's, when it's uh, iced up a little bit. I sometimes, auto low, it still goes forever. So sometimes on my star, star climate, I, you could either slide it over here and slide it all the way down. I run it like that a lot if I don't want to really fill the, the fan because auto, it seems like the fan is on all the time, okay? It's always defaults to echo mode. I rarely turn this one on um, except for when it's too cold. Um, the heat, seat heater works great. Um, the air care, whenever I get smelly passengers, I use this quite a bit. Um, I don't know if it's really effective or not. In my head, I think it is. Um, as far as the rest of the interface goes, I do use Android Auto on my Samsung Galaxy phone, whether wireless or with the USB. Sometimes it doesn't work when I click on Android Auto. It doesn't work. And sometimes it locks up. The great thing about this here is if you hold down the power button for about 10 seconds, it'll, be a, it'll do a hard reset. 
I've had I've had some issues where my screen has gone black before probably about three or four times um, all you got to do is hold down the button and do a hard reset and it'll reboot the computer system and it works so not really a big deal I have seen errors where the dreaded electrical system fault system um, I've seen brake booster error once when I've had the electrical fault system please service car you'll notice you could park it and then you cannot put it into gear so to fix that there's an ignition button right here and if you if you push the ignition button about 10 times rapidly um then the 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 fault will will like one two three four five six seven nine ten then the error will disappear and when i had my error codes pulled during my fifty thousand mile uh service there was no nothing noticeable i think it's just a glitch it's not a big deal. Um, you'll notice if you get the electrical system fault error when you're driving, then you will lose access to your to your uh, driver assistance and your adaptive cruise control until you stop off the side of the road and you turn it off and turn on about 10 times and it'll work. Um, not not really a huge deal at all, to tell you the truth, a little bit. It freaks you out the first time until you realize it's just a tiny bug. Um, do a multiple uh, starts on it, it'll go away. Um, this car has this button right here is for, for, uh, lane keep assist using the camera right up here. There's a camera in here. Uh, as far as lane keep assist goes, wow. I didn't, when I first used it, I was scared. I, I was scared it was going to stop. I was scared about, uh, I didn't trust it. It, I want to say that it, it almost lost control and curves a lot. I get the feeling that it's improved since i've been driving i don't know if it adapts to your normal route ways um but now i use lane assist every single minute cities highways um it is very 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 helpful um when i use it it's when you drive for 12 to 16 hours and you 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 use it it really helps you to keep uh to keep fresh you, you don't you don't use a little, so much of your your brain to actually process where you're at and if you have a little bit of difficulty with night vision it helps greatly takes a lot of stress off of you it does a great job keeping the distance it centers in the lane great it is so awesome i can't tell you enough how awesome the lane keep assist is oh my goodness i i said it all the time suggestion I wish yeah, the speedometer on this car is one mile over. It's one mile over the the speed limit. So I always have to set one mile under. And I always, so I, I tend to cruise four miles above the speed limit. I wish cruise control, when you set it, it would automatically jump above four miles to post a speed limit. It's very good at seeing the, the speed limit and, and showing you on the display. Um, I wish that you could push the button and it would automatically set your cruise to X amount over the speed limit. So set your cruise control automatically to four, per, four, four miles over the posted speed limit. I think that'd be a great feature. If anybody's from Volkswagen's watching that, that'd be so useful. Um, as far as the car goes, it's been, it's stayed pretty clean. Um, the lights are kind of cool. The navigation light in the front, there's a light that goes across here. I never use it at all, great auto. I always use Android Auto for navigation. I wish that you could tie that left and right light that comes on with the factory navigation to the Android Auto ma maps. I think that'd be so cool. Um, I, I think it's great. Let me let me talk about some negative things about the interior of this car. Um, I always keep, you can see plain is this plastic. The plastic gets scratched up. You can see those scratches there. And, and that's not good. Um, you can see that it gets scratched up very easily. Um, so I'm gonna have to replace this panel one day if I'm gonna sell the car. Uh, you gotta be careful from scratches. That's, that's a really big thing that makes me upset. Um, the, my window's tinted here. The <laughs> your seat belt will hit your tint and not, and scratch it up. Um, let's look at here. The room is great. I, it is so spacious in there. Um, I absolutely love it. 
and some negativity zone. Let's talk about the outside of the car here. Um, number one, don't get wax on the black on the black trim. Even with wax removal for trim, it is so hard to get off. Okay, I learned that the hard way with my kids. Don't get the wax uh, on your trim when you're waxing. Number two, be here. Everybody gets in and out of your car, leaves a ton of fingerprints right here. I know that's maybe just stupid people, but if you got people in your back seat, you're gonna have fingerprints all over your window every single day. So the car's a little bit dirty right now. Number three, the insulation is not good. And you could see here, um, let me go on this side, maybe show you more clearly. All right, it's we just cleaned it. You see how dirty this is right here? The door jams. Um, normally, the door jams are absolutely filthy um, on the I beam. I've never, I've never had a car. I never had a car before that had such dirty door jams, and they get really dirty. I think because there's poor installation on the rubber trim. I feel like they could have done a better job. I mean, how could it be getting so dirty if there's not so much air that's passing through there? So um, that's an issue. Uh, also in the back here on the seats where they get in right here, um, on the door frame right here, this gets scratched up easy. On the other side, there's more scratches just from people getting in and out of the back seat. Um, I wish there was a, I'm gonna get a wrap or something on there. I wish it didn't get scratched up so easily. Um, you can't see it very good it's getting dark right now unfortunately you see those scratches right there um that's not good i got these volkswagen seat covers that are great um the weather mat i couldn't get a weather mat that doesn't curl that's no big deal that's a weather mat problem i guess um but plastic scratch is easy here's the carbon fiber plates i got in the back just like the front because the paint is terrible um there is so much room in the back. I've fit three burly firefighters back here, more than six feet tall, and they tell me there's more room back here than the back of their Suburban. So there is a ton of room in the back. Um, as far as the trunk goes, number one, this part never gets clean during the car wash, <laughs> and, uh, and it's, it's, it keeps dirty a lot. The, the, the self-open feature on the back is great. I love it. I use it all the time. Um, storage is perfect. It's a great amount of storage in the back. Um, maybe not so much as my station wagon, but it's really great. Um, I love it. I haven't had any complaints. Um, this stuff gets scratched up, scratched up too a little bit on the bumper cover. Not too bad. Uh, so far, I've had zero problems at the back. Um, I put the seat covers on the back. The seat covers are pretty good, except for if everybody, these are the factory Volkswagen seat covers. If everybody sits on them a lot, the piece in the middle here comes out. Sometimes this comes unzipped. Um, I recommend the seat cover, keep your car clean. Uh, so what are we gonna talk about? The let's start, let's start in the front. Um, with this design right here, I was worried that it was gonna get rocks, rocks and dents and bugs it doesn't get that many bugs i know i need to go to the car wash um there's no chips in it after fifty thousand miles driving it really hard i did get the clear coat or the clear uh clear bra on the lenses to protect them i'm happy i did that the lights are great i think the storm light storm light i think comes out of right here i think and it shoots over on the edge of the road uh, maybe it's this light right here too i could see great at night being lit up, being lit up and stuff is a uh, is a great thing. It's pretty cool. The lights are pretty cool. Um, I get tons of compliments on it. But I did in the second day. The first week I had this car, some lady sideswiped me a little bit, and this car is built like a tank. You can see it just took a little bit of paint off my my guard here on my bumper cover here. I'm gonna get that fixed. Her car had about three and a half thousand dollars in damage. Um, it was unbelievable how sturdy this is. Um, as far as the front goes, 
Uh, the windshield wipers work fairly well. Um, I have a problem though. When you're outside in snow and ice, this section right here, the windshield, it always catches ice and freezes and I got to chisel it off and it stops the windshield wiper from going up here. I've never had a car, I never had a car that's had that happen. This doesn't have the heat pump on the North American model and it's not the all wheel drive so it doesn't have the heated windshield. But even with maximum defrost and everything, in the when there's when it's winter and it's and it's sleet or snow, I noticed that it will get the icy up here, and you'll have to actually break the ice up to enable the the windshield wiper to work completely. Um, as far as the outside goes, I've gone through three sets of tires. These are my current Bridgestones and lenses, and these are the Bridgestones and lenses AS ultra okay the factory tires on this car only lasted 18,000 miles um 18,500 they were terrible in snow i switched them out for some uh verstein v-r-e-d-s-t-e-i-n contract c-o-n-t-r-a-c-t contract pro all weathers that worked great in the snow i drove them just i just put these tires on about 200 miles ago 300 miles ago um i probably so i got about 30,000 miles out of them this this car is staggered on the rear they're bigger than on the front so so you cannot rotate the tires and if you cannot rotate the tires you cannot you only get half of what the uh, tread life is so i if i would have gone in 5000 miles earlier i would have totally got uh, my tires on the warranty but i didn't realize it that so i changed them out uh, and i hear the oem tires are pretty bad but i heard that oem tires like the Bridgestones and lenses are different, I heard, from the Bridgestones and lenses you buy from the tire store and they're not on the car OEM. Um, but so I, I said, these are also lenses. I hated the first lenses so much. I never thought that I would buy some more lenses, but these actually have an 80,000 mile warranty. And there's one of the few, one of the few uh, tires that do come with 80,000 mile warranty. So since they're staggered, that's at least 40,000 mile warranty, which I'm looking forward to. They're not all weather. They are mud and snow, but it doesn't snow that much uh, during the summertime. Um, I think I'll be I'll change these before the winter to some all weathers. And um, the all weathers, I was nervous to have a real wheel drive car in the snow. I grew up in Colorado. I drove my bug in the snow. They had a engine on the back. Um, I was real nervous to have a car, uh, and and I went up to the biggest snowstorm we've had in a hundred years up in Tahoe. Um, with all weathers, it drove great, fantastic. This car is a 6,000 pound car though. So I was a little bit nervous. Um, not it, when it, it, you got your momentum just going, I wouldn't, I didn't, I didn't push it super hard up the steepest mountains because just the weight will slide down. And so it's usable in all weather. I did come up to a couple, uh, and in snow, I did come up to a couple times where if you don't have momentum, um, you can't disable the traction control. That could be a problem. So make sure you don't get into that situation. Um, if you're a good driver, if you're a bad driver, it'd be nice to disable the traction control. I heard some people do that with a fuse um, or software updates coming, but it's usable in the snow. I, I'm surprised how good it did. It did great. Um, fantastic. And, and it absolutely blizzard here. Whiteout conditions. Um, so I hope to get a lot of miles out of these. So what, what else can I tell you about the car? It is a 6,000 pound car. Um, build quality is pretty good. Um, you can see a tiny uneven thing right here. I kind of, I'm, I'm autistic, so that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I gotta get the door adjusted. It's just a tiny bit off right here and right here. Other than that, the car is very straight. I don't find any problems. I just got one dent. So you can't see right here. Pisses me off, I'm gonna get that fixed. First dent, right? Um, actually, I, I got hit the other day I got hit by a big Toyota Tundra. Turn into the lane. When I was in the turn lane, he got in my turn lane without looking. And he caused me damage right here, right here, and right here. Um, I'm waiting for the repairs to happen. His Toyota Tundra, the left front bumper was destroyed. I can't believe the amount of damage it caused to his truck and, and hardly anything to the car. I mean, I'm still upset, uh, but accidents happen, you know, and, and I'm getting that taken care of right now. Um, prior to that, I did put on these mud flaps. 
the mud flap liner did get ripped and come out with snow and get ripped. I had one on order to change a mud liner and then the guy hit me and now I can change it together. But that kind of sucked uh, that the snow actually gets lodged up in all the wheels. It really, really gets in there. I don't know if it's because I put on the mud flaps. If not having the mud flaps would cut, let the snow leave or not. Um, but other than that, um, people have a hard time getting in the car sometimes because um, their IQ isn't so high. No, <laughs> they have a hard time getting in the car, but it's easier than a Tesla. Um, a lot of things that we're, we'll do a comparison to. Um, but they have a hard time getting out of the car a lot. And that's just because they pull it and they don't pull it all the way. And, and they don't, and they push before they wait. They got to wait for it to open. So you'd be surprised how many people have a hard time getting out of the car. Um, so what, what else do we know? In the back, I don't have a carbon fiber for the middle center console. I wish there was a, I'll, I'll get a wrap on there or something. Not a huge deal. Um, there's so many things I'm going to tell you. The charging port. Um, I have no problems with the charging port. I wish that it was, uh, I'm going to run out of power probably. I'll have to do part three later. I wish that the charging port had a brighter light that stayed on. The light goes off. So if you're in the dark, absolute dark, it's hard to plug in your level two charger. Um, using it every day, 150 times, $3,000 free charging. It's still very durable. It's not cracking, not showing any signs of wear, which is super cool. Um, I did the mistake of when I first got it, taking it through the car wash and you can't see it but i've got all kinds of micro scratches right here on this trim and i i hate it i hate the micro scratches in the bright sunlight when it's overcast like this you can't tell but in the bright sunlight it's terrible i'm going to get this a pillar wrapped and actually ate a little bit of my rubber right here um when the car wash so i'm i'm so pissed off about that don't go through a car wash i found a touchless car wash um which i use all the time um I had a hard time on grooved concrete on some highways that have grooves in it. I would notice the back would wobble a little bit and I, and I went to the dealership and I thought maybe there's a problem with the dampening and I couldn't get anything done. So it's only on some kinds of grooved highways. I have a hard time with it. Uh, and it's kind of pissed me off. Um, but it's not killing me. So there's no spare tire in the car. Um, I carry an air pump in the fixed flat kit. Luckily, knock on wood, I've had one flat which was fixable. I could still drive on it. Um, it's fine. Cleaning the top, go through the car wash and it cleans. Uh, it, it, with the car, I used to spray it off with my hand. No big deal. Um, you hand clean it in the summertime, but I work a lot. I work like 12 to 16 hours a day driving. And I guess, I'll bet you can't guess what I do, right? And let me open up here. Underneath the bonnet, this is where you have the air filter. I haven't sprayed it out once, 50,000 miles. I've put in a uh, windshield washer fluid. Haven't had to add any other fluids in here. When you're charging, you'll hear the, you'll hear the fan come on to cool the batteries as you charge. Um, I haven't had any issues at all with any electrical problems or anything else. I the light comes on when you when you're driving here. I that little symbol right there. I don't know why they don't have a. It's not dark enough, so you can't see. I don't know why they don't have a a Volkswagen light, but no big deal. Um, I wish they had some ambient lighting in the back. They don't have any ambient lighting in the back, which if you're in the ambient lighting thing, it would probably be cool if they had it. Um, I like this car. Uh, this car really has grown on me. Um, the dog gets in the back here. Um, you feel the wind. The car is not the fastest car, not the fastest EV car from what I understand. It is way fast enough for me, fast enough to get a ticket. Um, I could take most, I'm not, I'm not a drag racer, but it's faster than a lot of internal combustion cars. And the rolling torque, the rolling speed when you're going is plenty fast enough. I always drive in eco mode. Um, when I do want spirited driving, I, I do have a custom mode which I put everything in sport except for the, the climate control system. And there's settings you could do that. I recommend it. Um, and I, I get a little bit of a mileage hit. Not too bad though. Um, I generally get 
between 240 and 280 miles. Um, and I, and I charge, I, I, I charge, I drive until about 4 a.m. And then I charge 30 minutes when I have my lunch break and then I keep driving. Um, and, and really the car, the car is had not had a single problem in 50,000 miles. I am so happy with the way that it works. I, I couldn't have found a better car. Um, compared to all the other EV cars out there, the Kia is, is way more the e, the Ionic 5. And I don't even like the Ionic 5. I, I much prefer, per, prefer this to the Ionic 5, um, the design.